As you're well aware, uh, the question of war and peace has emerged as a central issue in this campaign. And the give and take of recent weeks, President Carter has been criticized for responding late to aggressive Soviet impulses, for insufficient buildup of our armed forces, and a paralysis in dealing with Afghanistan and Iran. You have been criticized for being all too quick to advocate the use of lots of muscle, military action, to deal with foreign crises. Specifically, what are the differences between the two of you on the uses of American military power? I don't know what the differences might be because I don't know what Mr. Carter's policies are. I do know what he has said about mine. And I'm only here to tell you that I believe with all my heart that our first priority must be world peace and that use of force is always and only a last resort when everything else has failed and then only with regard to our national security. Now, I believe also that this meeting this mission, this responsibility for preserving the peace which I believe is a responsibility peculiar to our country, that we cannot shirk our responsibility as the leader of the free world because we're the only one that can do it. And therefore, the burden of maintaining the peace falls on us. And to maintain that peace requires strength. America has never gotten in a war because we were too strong. We can get into a war by letting events get out of hand as they have in the last three and a half years under the foreign policies of this administration of Mr. Carter's until we're faced each time with a crisis. And good management in preserving the peace requires that we control the events and try to intercept before they become a crisis. But I have seen four wars in my lifetime. I'm a father of sons. I have a grandson. I don't ever want to see another generation of young Americans bleed their lives into sandy beachheads in the Pacific or rice paddies and jungles in, the, in Asia or the muddy, bloody fields of, battlefields of, of Europe. 